Hello, my crafty friends. Welcome back. Today we have House Mouse in the house. We are going to do a little bit of Copic coloring and build a sky scene. So before we get into that, I'm just going to share with you real quick the rubber stamps here that I have. This is this tall. This is Monica and Amanda and little Mama Mouse is measuring Baby Mouse, and they are so cute. I think that's adorable. So many children are measured as children, and to see how high they get and tall, how tall they grow. This one here would be perfect for get well cards or for anyone in the medical field. It's called Froggy Throat, Muzzy and Friends. Super, super cute. Love the sore throat remedies and cough syrup recipe back there. That's so cute. Then this is the one we're coloring up today. This is Little Mud Pie. She's jumping out of the air with like a little hang glider. And it's called Flying to See You. Super adorable. And all of these, I don't know if you realize, come with their own sentiments. This is sending love your way and you can do it. So make sure when you're looking at the stamp sets online that you check out the sentiments for each one because they don't show them on the front. These last two stamps are birthday stamps and I have bonus cards at the end for both of these. We have party time and party streamers. This one is Amanda and Monica and this one is Monica. So we will sit these aside and jump into the fun. So this is our card project for today. I am having fun with a new clearance product that I purchased. I got these cloud dies. And let me see, I think I have, yes. This is an old product that I got off the clearance rack color block cloudscapes. I do not know if they're still available. It's three different cloud um, designs and I just loved it and they were like five bucks. So even though two of them are really long, that doesn't matter in the least. I just cut them cattywampus and I'm going to build the scene. So before we do that, I'm going to go ahead and ink the edges just a little bit. I will get some ink out here and get a brush. And I'm just going to lightly just come in really light and just ink these edges. I don't want too much. I just want a little bit. And that's probably a little more than I wanted even. So I'm going to try to be super, super light and just have a little touch of blue. Just wanted a nod to the blue. It's kind of like a shadow going along there. And I'm probably not even going to need to ink my brush again. Hybrid inks are the best of both worlds and that's the kind of ink I'm using here and I'm just learning to play with them so okay so I got all of those inked up in both sides on the ones that have two sides so I'm going to sit that aside because I so I'm going to go ahead and adhere these with my tape runner show you how quick and easy these can create your scene on your card. I'm going to go ahead and put this corner up in the corner like so. Put it up, 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 up along the edge. Then I'm going to put this one down here in this corner. This all the way in this bottom corner like so and then I'm going to go ahead and trim this from the back that's what I love about these big shears 
Okay, so there we have the beginning of our cloud scene. Now, with these two here, you can go either way, but my idea here, I liked it sitting this way because I'm going to put my sentiment right there. That's how I planned it out. So what I'm going to do here real quick is pull my Misty in. And I have already got my sentiment in my Misty. And let's see, what color do we want to do our sentiment? How about we do our sentiment a little darker of a blue? How about I will do a royal blue by Simon Says Stamp, just so it has the blue, um, the blue continuing through. All right, now we'll go ahead and do it again just to make sure I have that excl exclamation point in there. Oops. There we go. All right. You can do it. Yes, we can. Then we will put this on here like so and I don't think it's gonna matter that that is actually a little uneven because these clouds are also cattywampus so just add a little bit of adhesive here where that little piece is from so I've been trying to record and get some recording in before my husband goes on holiday so I can have these ready for you after the holiday. So I think that will work out. So I'm kind of working and of course when you're trying to do something like that and get ahead everything that can go wrong does go wrong. And I had one video stop in the middle and not record and the, then this um, is fidgeting on me a little bit but that's okay because it's just paper right guys it's just paper okay I like that the way that's looking see that looks like clouds puffy clouds along the sky and that's what I'm after. Okay, give me a little bit of this. I'm going to see here. I'll hold it up so I can make sure it's along the straight of the edge. I just love these clouds. Why did it take me so long to buy them? It's funny, when they do the Spellbinder sales, I don't know about y'all, but do you just spot things that you've never spotted before? Because I do. I spot things I'm like, oh my gosh, $5? I need to look at that closer. <laughs> so, okay, so there is our little cloudy sky background. Now let's set that aside and let's color little miss mud pie so i've got us some copic markers here we've got some yellows for her little wings i did stamp her in memento tuxedo black i have got e double zero zero one and zero two for her skin and i think do i want her i think i want her in browns so I'm gonna do I had the grays and the browns here but mud pies in browns normally so I'm gonna stick with the picture and go ahead and do her in e30 e31 and e33 I've also got the r20 for cheeks and I have fussy cut her and I've picked up these um, spring assist ergonomic 
scissors from scrapbook.com. If you guys do not have a pair of these, they're only like seven, seven dollars, seven ninety nine, something like that. And they, I've been having some, some thumb and finger pain. And so I got these to try out and I was really pleased with the way they fussy cut this little girl out. So they're a little easier on the hands and they have very sharp blades. They're very much like the Fiskar ones that you see a lot of the creators using for fussy cutting. So I just wanted to let you know, I'll put a link for these down below just in case anyone is interested in trying them out. But they're again, they're from scrapbook.com. Um, okay, so let's go ahead and do her skin first. I always like to do skin first when I can. So I'm going to just color her skin. I'll, I'll do it almost all the way to the tips for this base color. Hopefully you can see what I'm doing here. The camera's pretty low. And this is the lightest color, E00. Do her little hand here. If the video ends up being long, I might speed this up a little bit and play some music here after a little bit. But I did want to mention, and I try to mention this in most of my coloring videos, especially with House Mouse, is House Mouse is one of the easiest stamps to color when you're beginning. Because the artist leaves so many details where the shadows are to be. So it, these little dots is where your darkest is gonna is gonna fall and the dots the bot base of the tail the dots you know around here of the nose around here of the wing and then wherever it, it doesn't actually have anything to tell you but anywhere there's a crease in the body would be darker so it the artist does really help with that which is nice let me go ahead and just leave a highlight there on his nose for right now. So um, in that aspect, though, it does make it a little easier to color these little guys up for shadowing. And, and, and honestly, these guys don't need a whole lot of shadow anyways, but they're not super detailed stamps. Is kind of oh I didn't do his feet and tail what am I thinking I'm talking and you might want to even put a little a little bit on his belly right there because his belly's bare go ahead and just do all his feet it's pretty much right the Sun is completely on his feet so we'll just make them all make them all colored in like wee flying through there such a cute little mouse and don't ever be scared to move your paper it's much easier to move your paper than it is to move your hand your hand wants to be in the position of coloring or writing so it's much easier to move your paper so don't be scared to do that Go ahead and just put some darker right along where the fur is and right along the base of the tail. And then we'll go in with a little bit of the EO2 and we'll do the same thing, just not as far out. Just going over it a second time, so it's a little bit darker. A 
and then here where it meets the fur around the back of the ankle maybe might have a little bit behind the toe right there and then the base of the tail where those little dots are then I will you really don't have a whole lot of cheek on here but you can put just a little pinkish right there if you want to but she really doesn't have any cheeks so and I might take the lightest and just bring all that out and you can go all the way out to the end if you want to now that you got all the colors there and I will go ahead and do her tip of her nose now because it just needs the one color Kind of wipe over everything it gives it a little bit of a deeper color and it blends in what's already there so you start light you go dark and you come back light and that blends everything together all right so we have skin let's do her fur in the same manner except the fur I'm gonna just do little flicks because they're little hairs so we'll just do little flicks and you don't I mean with house mouse you really don't have to do this but when I color real hair I do flicks so I'm gonna go ahead and just do it now And I'm going in the direction of the hair. That's just something good to get in, in used to when you're beginning. Um, because when you start doing people, you'll want to make sure to go in the direction of the hair. Um, here, it probably wouldn't matter. You probably wouldn't see it because the artist draws so many lines of hair in here that like, if I just come down here and go like this, you're not going to really be able to tell. See here, if I just do this, if you do that, you're not really going to be able to tell that I didn't flick there because the artist has so many lines in this area. So just, you, you know, but on, on when people, um, draw people, yeah, when artists draw people, they tend to have a lot of open space. And so you'll have um, space that you'll have to fill in and that space will require you to go in the direction of the hair so that's the reason I mentioned that so it's good just to practice where you know you're not gonna mess up so and then I'm going to because her belly is round I'm going to go ahead and put a cast shadow in here under the hairline and Hopefully that'll help accentuate her belly. And we'll do that a little bit more here with the darker one. I'm just going to go around her face here just to give her some cast shadow. This is the darkest and this is pretty dark. So I'm going to go ahead and just come down here just giving the illusion of a body around fullness and then I'm going to blend it out just a little bit and then I'll just put some dark up in here maybe a few strays using just the tip of the marker just so the fur has some of this dark in it. So 
And we're going to add more of the lighter colors here in a second. This looks a little odd right now. Okay, now let's go back down in color. And this will just blend those out a little bit. And give the illusion of hair. She's starting to look like a mouse. She's starting to look like a mouse. Say yes, sweetness. Say yes, sweetness. All right. Now we just need to add her little wings. Oh, you know what? I'm going to use a little bit of gray. I'm glad I have the grays here because there's these little handles that she's holding. So I'm going to make this metal looking right here. And this is C2, cool gray, before we do the yellow. And I might come in and do just a little bit of C4, right where her hands are, just to put a little bit of shadow there. And get the C2 again. Oops, wrong end. And just blend that out a little bit. I am using Copic Express It paper, and I'll link that down below also. The most important thing about when you are doing alcohol markers, no matter what brand you do, my biggest tip for you, especially if you're just learning, and, and honestly, anytime, but is paper in ink. I made the biggest mistake when I started trying to teach myself how to color and I used archival ink thinking it would not bleed. It's permanent ink, right? And I used, I don't remember what kind of paper. I think I just used my regular stamping paper. Um, but I used the archival ink so, you know, my ink wouldn't bleed. And it was a hot mess. So I gave up. So the most important thing you can do for yourself is to get Memento Tuxedo Black Ink and Copic Express It Paper. By far, best paper on the market. I've tried them all. And you will not be disappointed. Is it a little more pricier? Yes. Will you have so many less headaches? Yes. You can print on it. You can color immediately after stamping without any kind of ink drying time. And it holds a lot of ink blending. So you can saturate or go over your colors numerous times and it will hold the color. It is made for alcohol inks. So it's the biggest tip I can give you when you're de using alcohol markers. So treat yourself to a pack. No, no matter where you get it, Spellbinders does sell it now. You probably can get it on Amazon also. And wherever you get it, just make sure that's what you use. It's my advice to you. I am more than happy to help you, you know, with tips or tricks or, you know, anything else you might need when you're learning. I have two Facebook groups. And I will try to link those both below. One is focused mainly on the better press. The other one is for 
all card makers to share their projects and just be part of a loving community of card makers. So if you would like to join us, I would love to have you. I will leave those links down below in the description. Okay, I am just using two colors here. Just blend this out and we are done. Okay, there we go. Let me pull this up so you can see it. There she is, flying through the sky. Wee. All right, so now we will just put her here on our card and we can tilt her. We can tilt her that way or we can tilt her that way. What do y'all think? Tilt her. Wee. Or this way. Let's see. I think I'm going to tilt her this way, which will be, let's see. I'm looking at the sentiment. The sentiment is a little this way. So I'm wondering which way offsets that sentiment. Okay, this way is the way the sentiment's going, so I'm going to offset it this way to counter the sentiment. Okay, you can grab my foam squares, and we will pop this little baby up, and we will be done. Okay, I think four will probably do it. Wee. Okay, perfect. I'll set that up. And I do have two bonus cards for you featuring both of the birthday sets from the same release. I'll hold this up here and we will center it right about there. There we go, guys. Isn't it adorable? I just love it. It's so cute. I loved Fuss and Cutting that out. It worked out perfectly. Okay, so there's card number one. Here is card number two. Happy birthday. And with this card, I have used the notched corner frames for both borders. And with this back border, I don't know if you can see it, but I actually embossed the back border to give a little extra detail, and I used peppermint stripes. I know this is a Christmas embossing folder, but look how nice it is for every day. So that's what I did for that. It just gave it a nice, subtle, diagonal detail there. So that is number two. And then this is number three. And for this one, look at the little highlights running through the ribbon. Isn't that cute? I just loved it. And I'd used one of Becca Feekins. I don't know if you can see the detail. I don't know if you can or not. Yeah, yeah, I think you can there. But the detail along the edge is from the fluted classic rectangles, which is right here. And then I just used the um, precision rectangles for these two. And I lost a little of it here, but that was okay for, with me because I just wanted to be able to frame my, my image, even though it's still a flat, easy to mail card. So those are my three cards for today, all A2 in size, and I'd love to know which one's your favorite. So if you have a favorite, I would love to hear about it. Until next time, my friends, I will see you soon. Bye-bye. <laughs>